Good morning. I think everybody's going out to sleep. Let's try that again. Good morning. That's much better. Are you excited to be here this morning? Amen. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's stand together as we sing about the victory that we have in Jesus. Sidelines. 
and you're waiting for something to happen in your life, and yet you're too afraid of what other people think about you, I pray that you'll see examples today, that you'll see that the longer you wait to, and fear of what people think about you, the farther you are heading toward hell. And without Jesus Christ, you have no hope. You can't hide under your religion. You can't hide under your church membership. You can't hide under your teacher status or deacon status or, or, or any other kind of status. Jesus is there to help us have victory over everything. And we can't hide from our eternity. We're going one way or another to some place. And you have to determine which place you're going. And it's all about who you know. And don't say today about what you see today. Well, I gave my life to Jesus when I was a child. My question for you today is, did you really? Did you follow somebody in some broke prayer? Did you try to impress some adult that you really love? Did you do it because your friend did it? Did you have a camp experience, as one will be the testimony of today? It was a roller coaster of emotions that led you. Or were you like the Bereans that went home and thought about what you heard and searched the scriptures to find it true? Today is a day to uncover the masks. Today is a day to bust the facade. Today is a day of the beginning of revival at Emmanuel Baptist Church. And you can be a part of it, or you can continue to deny it. But don't sit idly by and let the devil have any longer victory in your life. Let today be a day of true rejoicing and true victory. Don't hide under your tradition. Don't hide under your faithful church attendance or your giving of tithes. Let victory be real in your life today. And it only happens by having an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ, the Savior Lord. As we were reminded last week, the worst things that a person could ever hear from Jesus Christ himself is, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And I'm afraid there will be too many in the church today that will hear those very words because they've hidden under the mask of religion believing they've had a relationship with Jesus Christ, yet have never seen a transformed life. And that is the key to a relationship with Jesus. You can't stay the same and know Jesus Christ. It just doesn't happen that way. So I pray today will be a wake-up call for all of us to inventory our lives. And you need to ask yourself this question today. Do I really have a relationship with with Jesus Christ, or have I been trying to convince myself of something that is not real? Let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day. And I pray today that you would help us to uncover the truth in our life. Do we really know you? Do we really have a relationship with you? Or are we just here because we've always been here? It's the way we were raised. It's the right thing to do. But yet, God, we know in our heart, based on your scripture, we will still go to hell with those kind of mindsets, if we do not know your son, Jesus Christ, the only way, the only truth, and the only life that there ever has been. I pray, God, today that you would help anyone in this place to take it off and be exposed and then confess and repent and surrender to you today. May genuine salvation continue this day just as it started last week. And God, help us to celebrate who you are in our lives right here, right now. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you have done for us. For it's in Christ in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said it. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you what the purpose of baptism is. Baptism is not salvation. Baptism is the act of obedience that Lord Jesus said we should follow. It is the purpose of us to publicly confess, publicly profess our faith in Christ. What's taking place in these baptism waters is what's already taking place on the inside of our life. And I do want to challenge you with this today. If you would say, I have trusted in Jesus as my Savior and Lord, but I can tell you that since being a, Jesus, being a Jesus follower, I have never been baptized. But I want you to know that you're already outside of God's plan for your life because it is really the first act of obedience that a new believer has. If you would say today that I trusted Jesus by never been baptized, well, guess what? You'll have an opportunity next week as we have we have a couple of others lined up for next week. You have an opportunity the week after that as we already have somebody lined up for the following week. Heck, I won't preach again until we're done dunking everybody that needs to be obedient to Jesus Christ so that we're glorifying God in a complete way. Amen? We will baptize until it's done. 
to help glorify and help people follow the Lord Jesus Christ in all that they do. We're going to start today by Miss Elise. That's a Christian jacuzzi. This is my friend Elise. Elise has been part of our fellowship for some time, has, has been a part of it in our children's ministry, has gone to a number of camps, been a, been a part of our youth group now here for a second year, and uh, been to youth camp, and uh, last week she stood right there at the front, and she said, uh, I didn't know Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And so we come today to celebrate Jesus Christ and what he is doing in people's lives, and so at least I would ask you, have you trusted Jesus to be the Savior and Lord of your life? All right, it's a my confession of faith, at least. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, raised in life and baptism.
His name is Trevor. Trevor belongs this big guy. And Trevor has been talking about baptism now for a number of months. Matter of fact, it was a while back. Some of you might remember Trevor actually came forward during one of our invitation times. It's been a few months. And uh, we talked about it after the service and said, you know, uh, he's got some interest, but he doesn't seem like he's quite grasping what's going on. So we'll wait a little bit. Trevor's been bugging his parents about baptism ever since, and Brian's been saying, hey, we, we need to see if we can talk with him sometimes. So Saturday morning, yesterday morning, we did just that. We sat down uh, while we were there with our, our Saturday morning men's group as a club. Saturday morning's been men's group, 6.30, Circle W. For those of you men that's brave enough to get up and study the Word of God, come to us. But uh, he came with his dad, and we had a chance to visit for a few minutes uh, to see what's going on, and upon talking to him about uh, Jesus Christ. He had something to say. So Trevor, I would ask you, do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord and you've given your life to Him? Yes. All right. Brian, I'm going to allow you the honors. The beloved profession of faith, that your Father baptizes you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, life and life. Everybody on the
at a crossroads of her life. Did indeed she know Jesus as her Savior and Lord? And so, Stephanie, I ask you this question. Do you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Have you surrendered to him in salvation and lordship? It's on that profession of faith that I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Raise the life of God.
Are you excited about today? Are you having fun yet in church? It's okay to have fun in church. Amen? Well, at this time, we're going to have our special welcome time. So if you'll turn, we have lots of guests this morning. Give them a holy high five, a handshake, tell them you love them, you're glad they're here. 